This presentation is about writing comments on school reports. It won't cover everything, but it deals with some aspects that I think are worthy of attention. A report is like a window. Firstly, it's a window which opens up onto the progress of a pupil, and secondly, it's a view of your school. Continuity is very important. Teachers need to look at the pupil's previous report to ensure that the latest report picks up where the last one left off. It's particularly important to highlight any downward trends in marks, stating the reasons why, and, if you don't do it, the parents will quickly come back at you with queries. There is a trend today for teachers to write lengthy comments detailing, often with much educational jargon, their pupils' progress. I'm not in favour of this. I believe you should remember that you are writing primarily for parents. They shouldn't get to the end of reading a comment and wonder what on earth you're talking about. So put yourself in their place and ask, what is it that they want to know? I believe that translates to three things. Firstly, how has my child progressed in relation to expectations? Two, are they making an effort? And three, are there any problems we should know about? And going on from point three, how can these difficulties be addressed? Here are some practical tips for writing comments. First of all, avoid repetition of words. This includes the pupil's name. Use personal pronouns as well. Also vary the length of your sentences and double check the comment to make sure that the language flows easily. And don't mix your tenses when talking about what the pupil has achieved. Be careful to use I and me correctly. Here's an example. There's an easy trick to know whether it's I or me without going into a grammatical explanation. Just take Mr. Muhammad out of the sentence and try it. Jason has produced good work for me. Obviously, it would sound silly to say that Jason has produced good work for I. Therefore, in this case, it is me. Oh, and please don't write myself instead of me. This is commonly done these days, but it's not correct and it sounds pompous. My school uses letter symbols for progress and numerical ones for effort. Whenever there is a discrepancy between the two on a report, make sure you mention why. In the case on the screen at the moment, it indicates that although the pupil's progress is just satisfactory, they are trying their best. This is important for a parent to know. When there are problems, be truthful, but not unkind. The statement in red might be truthful, but it's also brutal. Rather, temper a negative comment with a positive suggestion, as in the example in green. Also, where there are problems, try to suggest solutions, as in these two examples. This is also an opportunity to suggest some parent involvement in a polite way. Where pupils excel, resist the temptation to exaggerate. Give praise, but don't put the child on a pedestal. Parents may love you for it, but you're setting the next teacher up for problems. Give praise where it's due, but keep your comments factual. Now we come to the general comments at the end of the report. This is where the class teacher or tutor needs to look at all the specialist teacher's comments and tie up the threads to give an overall picture of achievement and effort. If necessary, you should communicate with your colleagues where there are areas of concern before making statements. Be sure to mention any noteworthy achievements and take the opportunity to mention personal and social development, including things like how the pupil gets on with their peers and teachers, their degree of self-discipline, helpfulness, etc. We need to help pupils master what are often referred to as 21st century skills. These are not always adequately tested in examinations, but the world of work tells us that collaboration and teamwork, creativity and imagination, critical thinking and problem-solving skills are the most important skills needed by today's professionals and which are often lacking in qualified young people who are entering the workplace. But not only do we need to be deliberately helping pupils to acquire these skills, we need to be commenting on them. Remember that what you write about children can be part of their self-image, so never label somebody. We don't want to imply that a child is a weak pupil, rather that they have a weakness which can be addressed. And lastly, try to end your general comments with an encouraging statement. Something like, I wish Jennifer a happy holiday and encourage her to keep fit and read a lot. Thank you for watching this presentation.